Hi, Mac. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Uh, you're um, one of us is on. Thursday Yeah, I got it hooked in here. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm going to put into some speakers here. Hold on a second. I want to see if we can get you. Can we hear me now? Can you hear yes. us now? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? No. Is it on? Okay, how's that? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Ah, great. Okay, so I'm turning the computer Mac to the boardroom that we're in with the task force members. All right. Good afternoon, folks. Hey, and there. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, this is Mac Williams. He uh, represents uh, Alamance County Chamber and the EDC. And I have um, Tommy Whit Winstead here, David Zilkowski, Keith Epstein, Cecil Barker, and we're waiting for Randy King to arrive. This is the task force board uh, that we put together. And um, we had talked before several weeks ago about how you guys were structured and, and, and how you've grown your EDC and the successes you've had. And we are in need of a structure here in Person County. We, we, we rely solely right now on the County Board of Commissioners to give us any kind of funding any year. Right. you know, for economic development. So we're looking for, for models that we could build on to make our county better. And that's I understand why I wanted... and I'm uh, uh, happy to be here and thank you all for your time. The, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big job to volunteer for. Uh, and uh, people like me, the professional side, really need to have business leaders like yourselves that have an interest and in, in willingness to, to roll up sleeves and do that kind of work. Uh, to make our jobs uh, better and easier to do. So thank you all on behalf of Sherry there for, for what you're doing. So so I guess, PJ, you want me to go ahead and just get started? Yes, if you want to go ahead and just get started, um, they, they've got a list of, of questions that they can go through too, but I'll let you go ahead and start with a presentation and that might answer a lot of questions along the way. Okay, well, I don't know that I've got a presentation, but, uh, but I'll, I can just start talking about how we're set up. First of all, uh, the, the chamber here has been the economic development agent of the county for the, the last 37 years. It started that way in 1984 uh, and has been that way uh, through uh, for the last 37 years. The county government used to have a staff person that was the economic development contact for Alamance County. For whatever reason and well beyond my time here, that, that relationship ended uh, and when the relationship ended with the county and the person in the job, the chamber stepped in and said, we will take over the work uh, if you'll if you'll help fund it. Uh, and so for 20 years, uh, that was how economic development in Alamance County operated and was funded by the chamber and by Alamance County. Uh, and my predecessor here, uh, spent his career here 20 years at the Alamance Chamber as the Chamber President and the Economic Development Contact, all in the same person, wearing the same hat. Uh, when he announced his retirement, uh, it took about a year uh, before, they, before they found me and then we made our deal here at the Chamber, but they had to go through a process of deciding do they want to keep the economic development function in the chamber or move it back out in the county like it had been before. And there was a community conversation about that. Um, and I was aware of that conversations, which is why I did not apply for the job immediately. I wanted to see how all that played out. I had absolutely no interest in getting hired for the job and then standing and then being on staff and trying to make it work among all the parties. So I waited for all the parties to figure out how they wanted it to be structured and staffed, and then I, I could decide if I wanted, if I was interested or not. Uh, so they went through a process of public-private conversation and decided 
to keep it the way it was that economic development would be within the within the chamber confines, not a county department. It would continue to receive chamber funding and county funding, but in addition, uh, the private sector would step up and have a private fundraising to produce to provide even more private funding, uh, as well as go out and ask the other local governments in the community to step in with some money as well. Uh, what had happened is that in the early 2000s, all the textile jobs were leaving and uh, things were going south. The guy had been here 20 years was was just caught in that tsunami and he got tired of trying to stop trying to stop everything. And so he said, I'm, it's my turn. It's my time to leave. Uh, and that's when the, the county stepped in and said, we've got and the, and the chamber too stepped in and said, we've got to do more to boost our economic development program. And so what they did was uh, they recommitted to the organizational structure being economic development housed within the chamber, supported by the county. Um, uh, and the, the chamber president and the economic development person would be the same person as had been the case for 20 years. And, uh, and they went out and got additional private sector funding. They set up a foundation uh, to, to be the vehicle for additional, additional private sector funding. And they went out to other public sector entities here, local municipal governments, and asked for their support, which they got. Uh, and so for the 17 years I've been here, uh, I have been both the chamber president and the uh, county economic developer. We are funded by the chamber, by the uh, Economic Development Foundation, and by a combination of, I think it's six local governments, the county, who stepped up their number, by the way, from the 20 years previously, they recommitted and said, we'll step up our number if the private sector will step up. So that's what happened. The, the county increased their support. The city of Burlington, the city of Mebbin, city of Graham, town of Elon, uh, uh, mainly uh, stepped in for public sector funding. So we are currently uh, operating in that capacity. We really don't have an EDC here where, um, where we've got uh, members of, uh, where we have a board that's appointed by public sector officials to come sit and I report to them every month. I report to the chamber board every month. I report to the foundation board every quarter. Uh, and I report to the local governments, of course, whenever they ask for something, but at, an, at least annually when I go and ask them for continued funding, which I have to do every year. We are, we are not an automatic part of the local government's funding. We have to go and ask for it as an outside agency every year. And in doing so, we have to make our pitch as to what was accomplished the year before, what we're looking to do next year, uh, and uh, uh, how much funding we're asking for. So that's, that's how it's structured and how it's funded. Uh, I guess, um, something else to say that our county, let's see, when this, when all this started 17 years ago, uh, the, the local funding was essentially, it, I don't know that it was intentional, but it worked out to be more or less each local government put in a dollar per capita for their funding. And it, it's kind of remained at that number ever since in terms of the, the number we started out with 17 years ago. I've really never grown except one time any of the public funding in the 17 years I've been here from what it started out at. The one time we did make a change in increasing government funding was when we went to Mebbin and to the city of Graham said, guys, we're bringing everything we're getting to your jurisdictions. How about, how about bumping up your number a little bit? So they bumped up their numbers a little bit, but it's more or less stayed the same uh, the whole time I've been here. On the private sector side, the foundation, uh, we did a, an initial, it was initially set up in 2000, uh, 2006. 
as a 501c3 foundation. Um, we did a, an initial fundraising on our own, meaning the business people who said to the county, look, if you guys increase your funding, we'll step up with private money. Those people went out and did fundraising on their own uh, as community business people. And they raised $300,000 for a period of three years. Uh, and in 2008, they, they started out gonna do that same thing again. And then 2008 hit, we were about halfway through our funding fundraising when the people doing the fundraising said, not only do I not in these conditions, do I not want to go fundraise? I'm not sure I can make my own commitment. And so we just stopped because <laughs> uh, 2008 was such a challenge. Uh, and so we limped along for 2009 and 10. And then we started to have to, we had to make a decision. Do we want to declare victory with the foundation and d dissolve it? Or do we want to recommit and, and make something more of it. Thankfully, the decision was let's recommit to it and make it bigger and stronger. So we hired a third party fundraiser, uh, went through, a, went through a, 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 a competitive bid process. We hired a, thun, a third party fundraiser who came in and did a feasibility study about what they thought they could raise for a five year plan. We drafted a five-year plan with jobs and investment and activities, and that fundraiser went out and sold it uh, to the community. And we went from having a $300,000 fundraiser for three years to a $1.7 million fundraiser for five years. Uh, we went back with the same fundraiser uh, with a similar approach in 2016, and they were able to raise two million for another five years. Uh, and 2021 is the fifth year of that fundraising, and so we're we've hired them again for a third time to come in and do a another feasibility study uh, for a potential uh, fundraising campaign in 20 and starting in late late this year and going into uh, about June of next year for, for another five years. So the foundation has really, uh, has really been a key partner uh, in, in the way we have funded and resourced our effort here. Uh, that's the main highlight of how we're organized and how we're structured. Uh, I'm happy to continue on with some other stuff or, or stop at this point. Uh, and let you guys ask some questions or get more details about what I've discussed so far. Matt, do you think you could share the uh, contact with that private fundraiser? It sounds like you've had a multi-campaign, highly successful relationship with them. That's right. Uh, it's Convergent Nonprofit Solutions. And the con my contact's name is Rick Kiernan, K-I-E-R-N-A-N. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, Sherry knows of them or about them. They're easy to find, and they do this kind of stuff all over the country, and not just for economic development groups. They do fundraising for uh, museums and uh, uh, community colleges and uh, not all kinds of nonprofits. Uh, chamber, chambers and economic development groups is just one of their sectors where they do this kind of stuff. Do you feel like having the economic development and the chamber under the same roof provides, uh, obviously you do a, a, a synergy that uh, is just good for the, the, the well-being of the local economy and its expansion? Well, I do. Or I think, I think the people, I think the business people involved here from, from whom we solicit memberships and funding for the foundation believe it too. I think they do like that synergy. The other thing it does is that it, um, as a as as a as an employee of a of a private nonprofit, as opposed to an employee of a public publicly funded entity, I have a little more freedom of movement. 
a little more freedom of uh, how I spend money on and on what. Uh, I, I just have a little a little more uh, of an arm's length relationship with with politicians and public officials. Uh, and, it, and it takes some of the politics out of it. Not a lot of it. It's not a lot, but I mean, there's still politics involved. But uh, yes, that relationship is. I still got great relationships with with my local local governments. I need to because they are they are very important funding partners and I, and always have been. Uh, one one detail I left out. So the public money doesn't go to the foundation. That foundation is 100 percent privately funded. Uh, the public money comes to the chamber and just goes into our chamber operating operating uh, budget. It, it, they give it for the purpose of economic development, and most of that public money just basically goes to support me and the activity we're doing at the chamber, having a place to with, from which to operate, paying the bills, and that kind of stuff. If I go take a trip, if we buy bling <laughs> and yeah. uh, and things to hand out to people, if I, God forbid, take a client to a steakhouse out of town, all of that's paid for by private money so that the local newspaper and the local politicians don't get the, the effort in trouble and make a thing out of it because I was doing what I needed to do to impress my client and not to impress them. So that, that's what I mean by giving me some latitude in what I can do and how I can do it with that private money. It sounds like the county and, and even beyond to the municipalities, you mentioned Burlington and Mevin and so forth, uh, have been pretty consistent with their level of support. But is it a concern that you don't have any guarantees from them year in and year out? Um, you know, if the budget comes under stress as it did in, well, as it does most years, I suppose, but you know, certainly um, 08 was a great example. That, yeah. That's something that we are, sort of wanting to address here in that the economic development is funded annually with no real assurance of what next year's level of funding will be. And we're trying to uh, come up with a new model that will allow for some consistency of funding. Right. And be so volatile. Well, and those are all very important considerations. You can't, you can't, uh, economic development isn't it, 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 economic development successful economic development is a process is not an event uh, and so you can't be in and out and in and out uh, and have any consistency of effort it just takes consistency of effort over time and so you're that's a very insightful uh, question uh, because uh, because it's true so it's always of concern uh, and I, because I think I think the local governments by statute can't make a long-term commitment. One, one body can't commit another body to something is my understanding, but well, that's, that's the way it's always been put to me. But uh, so it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't concern me quite as much here because we now have a 17 year history of getting that funding. What, what concerns me is one of the reasons we may have been so successful at keeping them on board is because I haven't asked them for enough. <laughs> if I asked them to, if I asked them, uh, if I asked them to a point where it hurt, it might be that, that I'm a line item that has to be scrutinized every year. I'm, I'm not as, I'm not as big of a line item because, because I have multiple players doing it. Uh, no one single entity is, is, is too extended. Uh, and so each, each individual's contribution, each individual agency's contribution isn't, um, isn't carrying an, uh, uh, a, uh, 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 a, a load that is too much or too, too high of the burden. And I think that's why we've been able to be successful because it really has been a team effort here among, among the agencies and institutions that were part of it. But yeah, um, you, you can't, a, a, a developer, economic developer has to, has to have assurances that they can do marketing, that they can get people, uh, that they can have activities that are consistent over time and can grow over time. 
Uh, so the commitment, the commitment needs to be on the part of whoever's driving this uh, to, to assure the organization that it will, it will be funded and resourced uh, until there's a good reason not to do it anymore. You mentioned, um, I think, to draw a conclusion that a lot of your government funding goes towards sort of core salaries. Um, the the private funding. What are the what are some activities or how do you use those funds? You know that you sort of termed as a bit more discretionary. This doesn't have to be super specific, but just broad brushes of how. Okay. Yep. Are used. Good, and that's a good question. Uh, so I have used the uh, I have used the private sector funding to actually in, uh, increase. I have paid st for staff for additional economic development related staff that the chamber couldn't pay. Um, I have, um, and so we wouldn't. So we wouldn't. We don't have to increase dues for the chamber, and we don't have to ask the local governments for more money for staffing. Um, uh, so, so we've used a foundation for that, which they've been, as long as we don't get too crazy with overhead, uh, uh, we're, the, fun, the foundation doesn't mind stepping up for some core functions to be funded by them. Uh, we've had specific projects for which we have done some work to, uh, to make the, our, our site or our building more attractive marketing we've uh, you see my logo and my uh, and my the, my banner behind me the foundation helped the chamber in paying for the consulting and the graphic design and all that stuff that goes into having a logo and marketing you know you read about agencies creating logos and do mark doing marketing agencies in a newspaper and the taxpayer thinks they're wasting my money on that instead of going bringing jobs. You know, this is part of it. Having a look, having a brand, it's all part of it. it but the, the, the general public out there who reads that that's how their public money is being spent, their that just that doesn't that doesn't read well, even though it's a le perfectly legitimate purpose. So we fund all that with uh, county funding. Uh, any travel that I've done. Uh, has been funded with that private sector. And then we've had some community activities. Uh, our community college, for example, uh, just got, this is a specific example, our community college just enjoyed the benefit of uh, a, large, uh, a large percentage of a uh, bond issue that our citizens just passed. And for that and with some of that bond money the community college got, they're going to build a center of excellence, a biotechnology center of excellence. And so they got enough money to build the building, but they're fundraising for equipping it and furnishing and doing other stuff inside the building. And so they came to our foundation and said, would you all help us in our fundraising? And so, yeah, so we, 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 made, a, we made a pledge uh, to that to be part of that fund run, we'll, and we might get a naming opportunity in one of the rooms there in that building. So our, 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 our foundation felt like it was a legitimate purpose to help support something that would be a, um, uh, a, 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 a resource for our, an expanded economic development in the life sciences arena. So it's so we've done community related things, we've done real estate related things, we've done staff and marketing related things. It just gives us it just gives us latitude and flexibility that we might not have. Uh, my my saying is there are things that the that we can do with that money that the public sector you either can't do or don't want to do with public money. How is the foundation board elected and what terms do the office of the directors say? Great question. So uh, the foundation is a hybrid uh, of, this. there's eight people. We had 60 investors uh, put up money in the last campaign. So uh, the foundation board is a hybrid of four people from the chamber board 
and then four people not affiliated with the chamber, but are from the foundation investor group. The, the four from the chamber board are, um, are the folks who fill a specific roles on the chamber board as officers. We have the four on the chamber board are the chamber, the chamber chairman of the board, the past chairman of the board, the chairman elect of the board, and the vice chair for economic development. So those are the, and each of those people serve one year terms in those specific roles. And so sometimes a chamber member will, a chamber member representative might be on the, on the foundation board for two or three years because they might, they'll rotate through these chamber chair roles, but they'll eventually rotate out. The vice chair may rotate in or out for a year, depending on whether they continue in a, in a certain role in the chamber. So that's the way the chamber side works. The foundation or what they call community developers or rather community board members come from the investors that are not also affiliated with chamber leadership at that time. And they are elected on rotating three-year terms. And a lot of them get on here and the community directors, the four community directors, we've had some just I want to sign. I want to re-sign up. I want to re-sign up, and they can, uh, they can, uh, be re-elected, or or re or reappointed, uh, if they if they want. And, and a lot of them like like to do that. So I I have more continuity among my community directors almost than I do with my chamber folks. But that's how it's done. That's it's split between the and the chamber is the the chamber is the address for the foundation. Um, I am the president of the foundation. I'm an ex officio officer. My chamber treasurer from the cha on the chamber board. He's also the treasurer of the foundation, also ex officio. And we bring in whenever we have a meeting, we have um, we have that board. The meeting uh, we have me and the staff that the foundation is paying for. And we also have other non-voting people who sit in and help and help uh, with the, any conversations we have. We have um, we have a chamber vice chair of economic development. We have a we had a we had a chamber economic development committee. Uh, this would be this would be the closest we came to having an EDC. Uh, the chamber went out and got. Uh, agreement that all of the funding partners can have can be part of a chamber committee that meets on a regular basis. Each each funding partner can bring two people uh, of their choice to sit and just we just sit and talk about what's going on, what's happening, updates, thinking about longer term things. But it's not it's not a formal formalized EDC in the sense that a lot of EDCs are. It's more of an informal, uh, it's an informal group of the, all of the funders uh, that, uh, that meet on a regular basis. So the person that's the, the committee of that chamber committee is in this group. And he's been part of the leadership that started the foundation way back in the day. He's about to rotate out uh, eventually. He's been at it now for a while. And then we have, you know, we'll invite others in. We'll have the the, the president of the community college or the director of the airport, those kind of folks. Do you, do you get, and how involved do you get in speculative building or, 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 or uh, partnership with, with speculative building projects? With we have with not you? done that. Uh, we have not spent our money on real estate yet. Uh, we have done some things to pay for some due diligence for some site work, we've done that. Uh, if, if we needed to step up and do a, and when it was project related, not necessarily uh, on a spec basis, helping a developer develop a site for a spec building, but when a project was in tow, 
and they were they were honing in on making we were trying to make the site they were inter interested in work and we needed to pay for some soil boring work then we did that with that with through the foundation but um, we have enough private sector development here for spec buildings that right now we've been pleased with what the private sector is doing here. Um, we've been fortunate that we've had a private sector doing spec buildings in this local market since the 1990s. And they've been here uh, pretty much consistently since the 1990s. This is the Samet Corporation. You may or may not be familiar with them. Yeah. With but uh, and then we've had since that time another developer come in and doing even larger spec buildings that Samet was doing. So the foundation hasn't felt the need yet to be the entity that does the real estate development. At least not yet. Now, a trend that seems to be developing is that these that these spec building developers know that counties are wanting them to come in and put up buildings because everybody knows that most projects start out trying to find the right building. So it, it's in our interest to have good inventory of buildings to offer. Some counties are making a deal with these developers to take some of their front, front end cost off of them, either marketing costs or uh, uh, won't charge them full property taxes until the building is leased or sold, some sort of a tax deal. Uh, I know Sanford has done that a couple of times now with Samet uh, down there in, their, in Lee County. We haven't had to do that yet, but even here, we may be faced with having developers who want to do a spec bill here ask us. So we're willing to come there, but here's what we need from you to help us do it. That hasn't happened to me yet <clears throat> and probably won't until I'm out of here. I'm, I've, I've announced my retirement at the end of October. Uh, so uh, I doubt I'll be faced with having to negotiate with a developer to build a spec building here and what we'll give him to, if he does it, if they do it. But I know that's coming. Uh, several counties around us are, have either, are either doing it or thinking about doing it to, 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 help us, to help a private sector developer make the decision to do it there when they might not otherwise do it completely on their own, which is currently, which has been the case all these years. Beck, uh, congratulations on your pending retirement. I saw it, it was right up in uh, business North Carolina. So congratulations. And I know that um, there has been a lot of successful business development out of uh, economic expansion just over the Orange County line. I know that's no coincidence. It um, has a lot to do with you and the climate uh, and the- uh, Well, you're kind to say that, but I will tell you, uh, anybody, anybody with two interstates uh, within a half an hour of, uh, of two airports, uh, uh, if they can't sell that, then they are in the wrong business. Uh, you, you, you know, have some good assets, but you uh, have put them to good the, use. If the I'm way I would say that, it was even I could sell that, is the way I would say <laughs> that. Uh, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, 85 and 40 converge in Orange County, and yet most of the development seems to be there in uh, Alamance County. Well, that's right. And uh, and, and, <laughs> and I, we were more proactive at, at, at uh, creating sites and parks. You know, Orange counties and the tax rate over there has been a detriment to them. Mm -hmm. But I will say this about that. Um, uh, once they, uh, once Orange County somewhere finally realized that they, they can't provide good services depending on widely scattered residential development as a tax base. Uh, once they realized they needed to start more diversification of tax base, they passed their quarter cent sales tax, what, four years ago or so? And they, they had had an area of far Western Orange County designated as an economic development district for 25 years, but nothing going on. Uh, once that, once that uh, tax, once that uh, sales tax issue was passed, they committed the money needed to run water and sewer into that 
into that district from the t city of Mabbitt. Uh, and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, they've gotten Medline and uh, a, couple of spec a couple of developers from out of the state are coming in there now wanting to put up spec buildings. And so they're finally coming into their own. Uh, and, uh, and I think they'll probably enjoy some announcements from the, as the life sciences spill over uh, outside of the RTP core counties. Um, I think uh, Orange will start getting maybe some of those life science projects that uh, uh, that we're not getting because they have to. You have to skip over. We have to leave Durham. You have to skip over uh, Orange County State Park to get to uh, Alamance County, and they just companies life science companies just feel disconnected. So I'm hoping it'll help us. Well, we, we got a little off topic, but I, I certainly wanted to just congratulate you. I know. Well, you're, kind, you're, you're very kind. Like I said, uh, the two interstates and the proximity to, to the two airports is, is why co companies are wanting to, and we've got, and we had product. We've had land and we've had spec buildings putting up, we've had developers putting up spec buildings. So we've had, we've had inventory and product and a reasonable cost to live in and access and proximity. So all of those things have contributed to our success here. I've just I've just been luckily uh, smart enough not to screw it up. Okay. Well, it sounds like you have a model that's uh, for funding and for uh, support, both public and private, that has uh, given you a foundation. And it has, and, and and it was a found it was a foundation. People weren't sure. Uh, this is a very conservative county, and. The stepping up that was done 17 years ago was kind of a gamble on everybody's part to put more money into an into a function that hadn't gotten much money. But uh, I'm not sure they wanted it. We were a very textile heavy county here for a long, long time, and a lot of those textile companies just I think weren't very supportive of much effort to try to diversify and and uh, compete for labor. So when when all that started to change and local governments and businesses started to step up with more money. It was a reaction to all of that, but it was a gamble on their part. What, what, has been a, what we've been able to do in terms of the recruitment over the 17 years, that's what has sustained the funding. If we hadn't, if we hadn't been able to bring in the activity we brought in, I, I don't know that it would have been, that it would have continued as much as it has. You got, you got to be able to show results. We appreciate you sharing your setup with us and, and the history and the context within which it operates and there are probably some elements that we can use as we try to create a model here. So thank you, Mac. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to help. If, uh, if there aren't any other questions, I, again, um, as a professional, I, I thank you folks as leaders and volunteers in this effort uh, it really does start with you all to, to get others involved and engaged, uh, to convince them it's the right thing to do, uh, to put your own money out there. Uh, and so to the extent that you all are doing that in person, uh, let me say thank you. Uh, that's, that's not an easy job to do and it's appreciated. Maybe not by the others in your county, but certainly by people like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping you know, that we can put together a model and and then it will be the job of others to um, you know, determine whether or not to implement it. But um, certainly the mindset needs to be that investing time and financial resources, if you are a local business, is worthwhile because the health of the economy and positive economic momentum is going to, um, you know, that, that tide is going to support your business. So That's right. It is self-serving. Right. You just need to have people understand that. We can all benefit. Well, thank you for uh, allowing me the time. I uh, enjoyed speaking with you folks. And uh, if there aren't any other questions, I guess I'll leave you to the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Enjoy okay. your next months. Yeah, thank you so much, Mac. Talk to you later. Appreciate I'll it. I'll talk to you later. Thank you all, all right, so thanks. much. Bye-bye. Like uh, Margaret, it was May I used to say, I was on the tourism board, and she'd always say about getting tourists into Person County, says, You put me a 
a river down on Main Street and I'll get all the tourists you want. <laughs> you say, you put me an I-85 and I-40 down Main Street, we'll get all the business you want. <laughs> The only thing that I didn't get, you know, was curious about is um, this proximity. Obviously, it was just sort of the great convergence of everything coming together. But how much time, um, when you when you're starting out, he's been there that this, this long. Is how much time did he have to go out and promote? I think promotion is one thing. Um, when we talked to um, Jennifer Lance, the first gal that gives a presentation, she's got a gal that goes out 30, 40 times. She's outside the county, out out soliciting and that's a, i think that's a key component i think business retention and solicitation you know are two key components of any kind of uh, model but i personally um, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt about what you're saying is absolutely true i think it's just a matter of can we put together some kind of a model that will provide for continued funding that will allow what is a longer term. I mean, he said it, it's not it's not the intent uh, economic development process. Correct. Correct. And it's, it's a process that's going to go beyond one budget cycle. And that's the issue that we have to address in this with the model. Can we put together a model? I liked uh, this last week's presentation that the county contracts with the private entity. And that contract is, I'm, I'm assuming it's a multi-year, so I haven't looked at it, but it's three-year contract, five-year contract. But that would provide some guarantee of funding and these private uh, pledges that are multi-year. It seems like the multi-year is the key. The only, the, the, I think the potential problem uh, or weakness of the model that was just described to us as we were implementing here is that all of the municipalities in the county to provide funding do so on an annual basis. And so, you know, he's obviously has results to show, probably has a good relationship with commissioners and so forth, has uh, some history, but, you know, we have some political turmoil or, you know, there's a downturn in the economy. Some decide, hey, we got to make some tough cuts and we don't want to cut our other essential services um, there's no multi-year commitment from either the private or the public side that's i think a model weakness that we need to try to avoid gathering something from each one of these presenters is interesting mm -hmm. we have a lot of tailwinds in the model that's for sure well that particular alan does yeah yeah, yeah. So like the first two counties all are you know that we're in the in, in the development game with Wilson and, and uh, Randolph County whereas Alamance would didn't need to be because of all the private development they've got. Mm -hmm. Samet has has actually been in front of the board of commissioners and done a presentation about what they do, how they partner with municipalities or private entities and they can expect their savings and there's a model that um, the uh, Board of Commissioners approved and Sherry took out the bid to do one here. And I, um, last I heard at the last meeting that uh, uh, all the requirements that the county had weren't being met. So I don't know if there's ongoing, I'm thinking there's some ongoing negotiations that Sherry might be doing with the Santa Corporation, I believe. But it, it had to be put out for, to bid, not just to them, but to other. Yeah, we're in this this clog, right. this government yeah, clog, and, to... and it's not that we don't need government support and that we don't want to work with it. But exactly. I think when you guys get to the point where you're going to be recommending, making recommendations about how the model is set up, keeping in mind that it's totally a private entity. You know, we don't need government approval to have a private entity, but we just want to make sure that we cooperate. You know, there's a, there's a coordination and cooperation built into it. But it, it's kind of it's 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 exciting and it's kind of nerve wracking because you want to really minimize your risk 
in the mail because it is risky now because she's on release. It's still ordinary. We commit. So we commit, recommit to the progress. First of all. And you also lose a little bit of control sometimes over that. Yeah, but that might, you know. It's not terrible, but you know, for some. For some it might be, but it's the reality of the world. You know, we're seeing that you know, we need to be nimble. But if the commissioners were to put in a model that relies in part on private funding, I think that the citizens would appreciate that. I mean, this is an all government project. This is supposed to be sort of private support. Anything else anybody wants? Do you want to adjourn the meeting and? Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. That's fine. We formally adjourn the meeting. So a second. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just want to. Somebody say something that I didn't do.